So in this video, I'll briefly talk about brown sequard syndrome. So this is a slide with a diagram that summarizes the patient's symptoms. So T10 is approximately at the level of the belly button. So this patient has upper motor neuron syndrome and a left leg as indicated in the shady green area here. And this upper motor neuron syndrome can be detected by a positive Babinski test upon physical examination. And the tract that's involved in the upper motor neuron syndrome is a cortical spinal tract. Next, the patient has a loss of discriminatory touch and vibration sensation also in the left leg as indicated in the shaded blue area. And the tract that's responsible for this is a dorsal column medial lamiscus pathway. Lastly, the patient has loss of pain and temperature sensation. However, this time it's in the right leg as indicated in this red. And again, for review, the tract that's involved in pain and temperature sensation is a spinal thalamic tract. So you can see that this patient is presenting with a variety of different neurological issues. It may seem complicated at first, however, it's easily explained by one event. And in this case, it is a hemisection of the left section of the spinal cord. And in our specific patient case, it's around T10. So this is a very simple cross-section of a spinal cord just illustrating the damage to the entire left side, hence hemisection. So this is a more detailed diagram of the spinal cord that indicates where the tracks run. So just to summarize, again, cortical spinal tract is involved in motor function. It runs through the lateral funiculus. Spinothalamic tract, again, is for pain and temperature sensation, and the input here from the nociceptors as well as thermal receptors actually come from the dorsal aspect, and then it synapses here at the dorsal horn and eventually travels as the spinothalamic tract in the ventrolateral funiculus. Um, lastly, we have the mechanoreceptors, um, which is basically input for the dorsal column lamiscus pathway that comes in also in the dorsal aspect and ascends through, again, the dorsal column lamiscus pathway in the dorsal um, area here. So this is a very crude image. Um, I apologize for the poor quality. Um, however, what I try to do here is show you where exactly these tracks run through this damaged area to give you an indication um, of why the symptoms are what they appear to be. So here I have summarized exactly what is going on with the patient in the case of a hemisection of the left spinal cord at approximately T10. So if we go look at these one by one, so we see the patient is presenting with a loss of tactile and vibration proprioceptive sense in the left leg, which is the same side as the side of the hemisection the left side here. And so that is an ipsilateral loss. And so it's ipsilateral because if you look at what is going on and where the dorsal medial lamiscus pathway is running, we see that input for the left side um, from the mechanoreceptors comes in and ascends also on the left side through dorsal column medial lamiscus pathway. However, this whole area is, if this whole area is damaged, then input here is damaged as well. So that's why we're seeing um, a loss of sense in the left leg given this left hemisection. Next, we have the cortical spinal tract, which is involved in motor function. And again, to remind you, the patient had upper motor neuron syndrome in the left leg, which is means that it's also ipsilateral because the hemisection is also on the left side. So you can see the cortical spinal tract comes in here. Remember, it runs through the lateral funiculus eventually it's going to synapse at a ventral horn um, on efferent neurons here. So you can see that left input for the cortical spinal tract, because it travels on the left side, and the left side is damaged here to the spinal cord, we're going to see an ipsilateral loss of motor function in the left leg. Lastly, a little more complicated is, is what's going on with the spinal thalamic tract. So we see that the patient is... Um, having loss of pain and temperature sensation in the right leg, which is a little bit different from what we've been seeing with the damages to the left side. And so to remind you, the spinal thalamic tract is contralateral, meaning that input, in this case, for example, input from the right leg that involves nociceptors and thermal receptors for pain and temperature sensation comes in 
and the dorsal aspect here and synapses on the dorsal horn. However, this next neuron will actually cross over to the left side and will ascend on the left side, meaning that input of pain and temperature sensation from the right side actually runs through the left side of the spinal cord. And because there's a left um, hemisection here, all of this right input that's ascending here through the spinal thalamic tract is damaged. Hence why we see contralateral loss of pain and temperature sensation in the right leg. So I hope this video was useful and I hope it was clear enough to show you um, the basics of brown Seagward syndrome. But it's really all about understanding the tracks and where they run and how they run, whether it's contralateral or ipsilateral.